All right, and the last theorem that we are going to look at is called the monotone convergence theorem. Uh, so the first thing that, that we need to understand to, um, um, to, to, un to, to begin with the monotone convergence theorem is what a bounded sequence is, right? So a sequence is bounded if there are two numbers, uh, small m and big M, such that um, our sequence is kind of sandwiched between the, these two numbers, right? So then we have the upper bound and, and the lower bound. So notice that, um, well, here is a graphical representation of this, right? So um, the lines y equals small m and y equals big M are just uh, horizontal lines and the sequence is bounded. It means that, uh, you know, all the values of the, the sequence are in, in between the, these two numbers. So here is an example of this on I probably wanted another example. I mean, both, both, well, I have two examples and both of them are actually bounded. So, and if you kind of just, you know, move to the right of this, you will see that, yeah, it's um, for all the elements of the, all the terms of the, the, the sequence are between these two, two horizontal lines. So notice that the, the, these uh, upper and lower bounds are not, not unique. So if you have any lower bound and any number that is smaller than it, so like in, in this case it's negative four, but if you look at y equals negative uh, no, 4.7, it is also going to be a valid lower bound, right? Um, so uh, this is what a bounded sequence is, right? So now um, here is a very simple example, right? So uh, explain why the, the sequence is bounded. So minus, um, sorry, minus one to the n is basically either one or negative one, right? So it is less than or equal than one and bigger than or equal than negative one. So these are your lower and upper bounds respectively. Okay, um, yeah, a bounded sequence may not be convergent. It's, it's pretty kind of natural, right? On the other hand, a convergent sequence will have to be bounded basically, right? I mean, because, you know, if it converges, then eventually uh, it is bounded between, well, if the, lim the value of the limit is L, then eventually it is bounded between L plus epsilon and L minus epsilon. And uh, at, at the same time, the initial part of the sequence is all always bounded because it's, it's just finite, right? So uh, if a sequence is convergent, then it is bounded. But if it is bounded, it may not be convergent. So the next thing is that the sequence uh, is said to be non-decreasing uh, but basically, is is if every next term is um, smaller, well, bigger than or equal than the previous term, right? So uh, the notation for a non-decreasing sequence is that a n is non-decreasing means increasing, right? So upper arrow. A sequence is said to be non-increasing if every next term is smaller than or equal than the previous term. Right, so then the sequence is non-increasing. So a sequence is monotonic if it is either non-decreasing or non-increasing. Like in going back to this example, so the, the black sequence is not monotonic because it just goes like up and down, up and down chaotically. Uh, but if you look at this sequence, then the, this sequence is uh, non-increasing. So because every next term is either the, the same as the previous term or is smaller. So it is non-increasing. Well, um, a non-decreasing se sequence, if you replace non-sharp inequalities with sharp inequalities, then you will get um, a strictly increasing sequence from a non-decreasing sequence. And the notation is a n is kind of like double arrow. And for a strictly decreasing sequence, the notation is a, a, uh, a n double down arrow. Okay, so here is an example. How do we show that the, the sequence is decreasing, right? So decreasing means strictly decreasing. So we need to show, or want to show that every next term is smaller than the previous term, right? So a n should be bigger than a n plus one, right? So how do we show it? So let us just rewrite what exactly we want to show. Uh, so three over n plus five is bigger than three over 
n plus 1 plus 5, right? So this is a n and a n plus 1 respectively. So we want to, to prove this. Well, strictly speaking, it's not very hard to see it because, you know, um, the in the left uh, hand side, we're dividing 3 by n plus 5. And in the right hand side, we're dividing 3 by n plus 6. And n plus 6 is, is, is bigger, right? So we're dividing by a bigger number, so we get a smaller number. But uh, let me probably derive it like from, from the, the basics, right? So the, this is the inequality that we don't know yet, right? So, but we, what we do know is that we can um, turn it over. So by replacing both um, left-hand side and uh, right-hand side with their reciprocals. And the new inequality is going to be uh, equivalent to the original one. So, which is why I'm using the this notation. So this notation means that the new inequality is equivalent. So it happens if and only if, right? So n plus five over three, n plus six over three. And when we change the to the reciprocals, we need to switch the sign of the inequality, right? And this happens if and only if. Basically, we can multiply by three. So n plus five is less than n plus six and can be canceled out. So this happens if and only if five is less than six and which is true, right? So, which is true. Since the last inequality is true and the original one was equivalent to the last one, it means that the original inequality is also true. This is how we can uh, show that the sequence is decreasing, strictly decreasing, right? So, um, yeah, that, that's, that's basically it. Uh, there are some other ways to show that a sequence is non-decreasing or non-decreasing or strictly uh, is like uh, we can subtract a n from a n plus one and check whether it is positive or negative, or we can take the ratio and see whether the ratio is bigger than one or smaller than one, uh, or we can convert it to a function and uh, check that the function is um, non well, has positive um, derivative or negative derivative, right? So there are kind of other methods to, to, to test for monotonicity. Uh, so the kind of the, the whole point of the, this is to apply this monotone convergence theorem, right? So every bounded monotonic sequence is convergent, right? So if we know that our sequence is bounded and if we know that it is monotonic, so it is either increasing or decreasing, then it it has to, to, to converge to a certain limit. And from what I understand, this theorem is the original tool to, to prove that uh, the, the sequence one over one uh, plus n raised to the power n approaches to, to some limit, right? So has some limit. This is how they, take, they, they proved that this limit exists initially. So they prove that the, the, the sequence is bounded and monotonic, but it's not easy, believe me, it's, it's not easy to, to, to do it. it. It's true, but it's kind of, you, you need a lot of calculations to, to do it. Um, now, the, the, the proof of the monotone convergence theorem itself is, is pretty kind of in, involved. So you, you need some high level of mathematical understanding to, to to go through the, the, this proof, which is why um, I'm not going to, to explain it. Um, it is important to, to understand that the, this theorem, it does not tell us how to compute the limit. So it just tells us that the limit exists. So as an example of um, applying the, this theorem in a situation where, you know, the familiar techniques of uh, finding the limits, the, the limit fail, um, I can give you the following, right? So, um, Let's construct the following sequence. So x1 is 1. x2 is going to be sine of 1. x3 is going to be sine of sine of 1, and so on, right? So every next term, so xn plus 1 is going to be sine of the previous term. Um, well, what, what, what we see here is that, you know, uh, so we, we get, essentially we get smaller and smaller numbers, right? So because, and we always get uh, positive numbers. Right? So because, you know, 
sine of one is positive and it is smaller than pi over two. And if you apply sine to, to a number that is between uh, zero and pi over two, you get um, something positive and it should be still smaller than, than one, which is means that it's smaller than pi over two and so on, right? So what we see here is that all these numbers are going to be uh, positive and they are less than or equal than, than one because every next one is just the sign of something. So it, it, it is smaller than one. So this, this sequence is bounded. At the same time, we know that uh, if uh, alpha is positive, then uh, alpha is bigger than sine of alpha, right? So which tells us that uh, x n is bigger than sine of x n, which is x n plus one. So this means that x n x n is a, a decreasing sequence. Right, so this sequence is bounded and decreasing, but uh, since it is given by a recurrence relation rather than by um, an explicit formula, you know, our techniques to find limits, they, they basically fail. So, you know, we, we can't really apply um, a limit loss here. We can't apply the squeeze theorem here and we can't apply um, the well, L'Hopital's rule here. So, because, you know, we do not have um, a closed form equation for um, for xn, right? So we know that the limit exists, but we can't really find it, right? So it is a, a good kind of uh, brain teaser for you to, to actually figure out what the limit is. So what is the limit of this sequence? Right, so, I mean, if you, if you like a little bit of a challenge, you, you can think of, about it and, uh, you know, ask me to, to check your <laughs> calculations. Or you can post it on Telegram chat. <laughs> All right. Um, right. So, again, so the, the, this theorem is used to show existence of a limit, but it doesn't tell us how to compute. So let me go through one more example uh, of when we can actually compute the limit of the sequence. Uh, so this is something familiar. Because, you know, we can uh, just divide both numerator and denominator by uh, by n square here. Uh, sorry. And applying familiar techniques, we can easily conclude that we get 1 over n times 1 plus 1 over n square. And the, the limit is 0. So here we, we know the answer, right? But the, the point here is to demonstrate how we can apply uh, the monotone convergence theorem. Um, to 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 actually kind of figure figure it, this out, right? So the, to do this first, we need to, the, the first thing to do is we need to figure out whether the oops, uh, whether the, the sequence is. Um, I mean, we we need to show that the, the sequence is decreasing, right? So how do we know that the sequence is decreasing? What we can do, we can convert it to a function. So in part a. What we can do is we can convert it to a function. So we can write that f of x is x over x squared plus 1. And then we can find the derivative of this function, right? So f prime of x is going to be, the, this is the ratio. So this is going to be like x squared plus 1 uh, on top in minus 1 minus x times the, the ratio of the denominators to x over x squared plus 1 squared. Uh, and this is basically 1 minus x squared, x squared plus 1 squared. And notice that, you know, uh, we are actually going to apply it to n, right? So and n is starts from, from 1. So, which means that we can assume that x is bigger than or equal than, than 1, and this is going to be less than or equal than 0. And it is actually going to be strictly less than 0 um, if x is strictly bigger than 1, right? So, which means that f prime of x is going to be strictly negative if x is bigger than 1. So, 
which means that the, the sequence is decreasing. So part A is done, right? So now part B, why the sequence is bounded? So part B is somewhat easier because uh, AN is definitely bigger than zero, right? So it's just the ratio of two positive expressions. And at the same time, the sequence is decreasing, right? So which means that uh, AN is, is going to be less than or equal than its first term. And the first term is one half. So the first term is one half and then it starts decreasing. So the, every next one is going to be even smaller. So, right. And by the monotone convergence theorem, we conclude that the, the sequence converges. And again, so re, le, let me repeat it. So in this in this case, so we can actually do it by you know easier techniques. So we can just apply uh, a limit loss and just immediately see that it is zero. But if we pretend that we don't know limit loss, so then we could uh, apply this monotone convergence theorem. But then we wouldn't know the value of the limit, right? So here is just the, the same thing. So the sequence is decreasing and it is bounded and since it is decreasing and bounded, we conclude that uh, it converges. Okay, so this is how it works. Now, uh, that's the end of part eight and the end of the lecture.